Hi guys. <laughs> um, I just want to start by saying I'm I'm really glad to be here um, up in Birmingham today um, with everyone and 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 listening to to everyone's sort of testimonies and all the the talks and panelists that's been up here um, earlier today it has been really really insightful. My name's um, Quajo Twenabo and I'm a um, I'm a campaigner, social housing campaigner, and essentially what that is is a massive pain in the backside for landlords. That's social landlords and private landlords. Um, but what I've been doing is I, I it started off um, just over a year ago. So I was living in um, poor housing. I mean, I was in I was in um, social housing and have lived in social housing for the majority of my life. Um, but in the specific and in the specific case, my landlord, my provider happens to be the biggest in Europe um, and they're known across the country. And me and my sisters were living in this accommodation that was absolutely falling apart. We had cockroaches, mice, damp, mould, um, asbestos. We had a kitchen that was almost 100 years old. The uh, units falling apart. We had a bathroom we couldn't even use. Lights filled with water. Having to shower at the gym. And whilst that was happening, my dad then became ill. Um, so he was diagnosed with stage one esophageal cancer in 2019. Living in these this environment, and um, he deteriorated quite rapidly to stage um, four, meaning he was bed bound, couldn't walk, couldn't eat, couldn't drink. He was being fed through a tube in his stomach. Meanwhile, there were cockroaches crawling around the house. There was mice, all the the same conditions I described, and he was receiving medical treatment in those conditions. And we had been complaining to our landlord, complaining, complaining, as you do, wanting help, still paying rent every single month, um, and they did absolutely nothing. Um, he passed away and then things went from bad to worse. On De Davies' funeral, there was a massive leak which caused the ceiling to partially collapse and that was February 2020. Um, they didn't come out to even look at it until the October of that year. They then took it down and told me, uh, they hadn't even dealt with any of the other disrepair, but they told me I wouldn't have a ceiling for Christmas and I wouldn't have it till the following year. That was the case. So at that point, I had just had enough, took pictures of my house, put it up on social media, um because i just thought they're not they're not listening um it got to a point where i actually phoned them in the new year and asked them i like are you, you've told me you're coming out for the like hundredth time and they said oh we're really busy we're not coming out and hung the phone up on me so i said that's it um so i then shared it online it picked up um and the news got hold of it local news and shared it and then my housing provider turned around and said we're sorry after everything, all of that, my dad and whatnot, and they turned around and said, we're sorry that Quajo feels as though he hasn't received the service he deserves. And I just thought, you're an absolute joke. And and, and that was the, the catalyst for them. And things just went downhill because then I decided to go around my whole estate, every single house, knock on every single door, went in with my phone, took pictures. They were living in even worse conditions to me. I think there was over 500 homes. I shared it. That was picked up by ITV News in two weeks. We spent two weeks filming um, on the estate and it went out as a top story a year ago last month but it even got to the point where and um, the housing provider found out that we was um we was filming and surprisingly i get messages we was all in a whatsapp group chat on the day we had finished filming i got a text from the tenant saying oh how's the housing's come out to fix all my issues they've knocked on my door um weirdly and then i'll get in one by one all of the tenants telling me the same thing but went out as a top story and then i went around other estates did the same in my local area same housing provider and then from there, I I started getting messages from tenants across London, um, from different housing providers saying the same thing, and not just housing associations, but local authorities too. I can tell you they're actually worse than housing associations. I can admit that because they get off very lightly, um, and the conditions are absolutely horrific. Now I'm going around um, uh, the UK. I've been to Birmingham two months ago. I highlighted a case, worst case of damp and mould. Um, the lady in there was blind. She had a stroke. She's in her 70s and um she was bed bound every wall and every door in that house was covered in mold and her daughter worked for the nhs and they were living there for the past 10 years they had been complaining to birmingham city council absolutely nothing i then get involved and uh, within 24 hours they're, they're they're moving them out and telling them they're going to find them temp uh, permanent new accommodation it shouldn't be like that and that's the same with the work that i do now so when i go in there that's what happens. Tenants, I mean, the other day I highlighted a case, worst case of cockroaches that I had seen. And they had been complaining for 10 years. 10 years they had been complaining. I even left with cockroaches on me. It was that bad. The infestation was that bad. And 24 hours moved them out and put up a generic statement online because thousands of people had, had, had seen it. But that shouldn't, um, absolutely shouldn't be the case. But it happens all too often, I mean, I'll describe some of the scenarios of like, tenants with cockroaches, 
damp mold mice i didn't even know we had venomous spiders in this country but we do because i went to a house that was infested with hundreds of them um sewage people's homes being flooded with sewage people's washing machines sinks baths filling up with sewage and flooding their homes ceilings collapsing on people cupboards collapsing on people i had one lady that was knocked unconscious because the cupboard while she was cooking they had the cooker on collapsed from above her because the housing providers didn't actually secure it when they came they didn't screw it into the wall like you would expect collapsed on top of her knocked her unconscious and she woke up to all the food burnt um, I'm surprised it didn't catch fire. But when I say people are dying in their homes, they 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 literally they quite literally are. I've spoken to tenants where they're they're dying of cancer, um, stage four, like my my dad, and it's happened time and time again. And um, they're they're whilst they're dying, they're also having to fight their housing providers for a decent um level of living that we sh should all be entitled to i mean it's a human right and it's a human right violation that's happening on a scale that people won't imagine i mean i've been doing this for a year now it's been happening for the last 40 or 50 years i've just happened to go into people's homes with a camera and make it public and share it with thousands if not millions of people um and they've been aware this is going on so that's essentially what i've been doing but i'm so glad the conversation of housing is is picking up especially over the last year and, and people really should be talking about it, whether you're in housing or not and I had a conversation with Nikki earlier about this there's this um there's this stigma and I said it's from last year it's very much I thought it was just a UK thing but I think it's just a human being thing in a lot of cases where everyone's about me 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 and it's very selfish if it doesn't affect me it's not my issue it's not my problem um I don't have to deal with it and it needs to go from that to we 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 because we really should be thinking of each other where it's whether it's housing or whether it's climate change i've had people say to me oh we don't need to worry about climate change uh, we'll be dead anyway before it starts affecting anyone and it's like that's the problem that's the problem there you shouldn't have to be thinking about yourself i didn't get paid for any of this i was using my student loan to go out and do it why because i cared and if the right people cared about these situations we would not be in these situations that's the problem and that's where the foundations have to be built it's on no foundation can be built until people genuinely care and not just stick on their websites that they care about their tenants like all of these housing providers but yeah that's essentially what i do <laughs> thank you